Hi everyone, my name is Steve Bodair. I'm part of the UK's droid building community and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about a system called Padawan 360. Now Padawan 360 is a remote control system for droids. Um, it's certainly not the only one and not necessarily the best one depending on your requirements and circumstances. But what it is, it's a very simple uh, to install and configure and very ergonomic uh, little control system and all the parts are still readily available today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through a uh, Building the Padawan 360 system. I'll talk to you a little bit about the pros and cons of it and maybe compare it to a couple of the other systems that are available. So without any further ado, let's go. So a quick shopping list of things you'll need. First of all, an Xbox 360 controller, as you can probably imagine. Uh, you will also need an Xbox 360 USB receiver. Uh, this particular one is a, a pattern one. It's not a genuine Microsoft one. Um, I've had um, good experiences with absolutely the Microsoft one. This particular one worked absolutely first time as well. So quite uh, quite impressed with that. Secondly, you'll need an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega. Uh, I happen to be using an Uno for this one. Next up, you'll need a USB host shield. Now, what this little... Uh, board does here is it piggybacks into the UNO and then gives you a way of talking over USB to the actual UNO itself. If you want uh, some sounds you're going to need some sort of uh, MP3 player and the one that the board or the, at least the sketch for Arduino is written for is one of these. This is a SparkFun MP3 player as we can see there. I also quite like to use a uh, voltage readout on my builds as well makes it uh, nice and simple to keep a track of your voltage of your main batteries when you're putting your system together. The next thing in our shopping list is one of these. This is a Sabertooth 2x32 uh, DC speed controller. You can purchase these through one of Dimension Engineering's distributors. Uh, in the UK, you can get them through Robot Shop. The next thing in our shopping list is one of these. This is a Siren 10. Uh, this is also a DC motor controller, but it's a single channel, and we're going to be using that to control our dome motor. Also available through Dimension Engineering and their resellers, uh, Robot Shop is a common one for use in the UK. Also on our shopping list is a heavy-duty switch, um, so this will be our basically our mains power on-off uh, as far as the board is concerned. The next thing on our shopping list is one of these. This is a ground loop isolator. This particular one made by AV Link um, is an exceptionally good quality one and it eliminates any sort of noise or hiss out of your circuitry so that when you go into the amplifier, and uh, this is the amplifier I'm going to be using, uh, you should get lovely clean sound out without any sort of hissing sound that you quite often experience with amplifiers. So this amplifier is a 100 watt amplifier. It is uh, commonly available on AliExpress and Amazon, and this will also run up to 24 volts. One of the things to think about quite early on in your droid build is what batteries you're going to use and what voltage they're going to run at. Uh, now, fortunately, both the Sabertooth and the Siren speed controllers uh, will happily take up to uh, 24 volts, no problem at all. But the uh, USB host shield and uh, Arduino and the SparkFun MP3 player will not run at that voltage. So you have to either drop it down um, or fortunately what we can do is we can actually use the Sabertooth and Sirens um, as they have a regulated 5 volt outlet, which we should just focus there. So as you can see, we've got 0 and 5 volts out on the Sabertooth. And likewise, 0 and 5 volts out on the Siren 10. So what I'm going to do for this particular build is I'm going to use the um, 5 volt out of the Sabertooth to power the Arduino side of it. And I'm going to use the 5 volt out from the Siren 10 to power the SparkFun MP3. So off camera, I've continued working on this particular board. Um, first thing to note is that I've now got all of the components screwed into place, um, mostly with... Um, nylock nuts on the back to stop them sort of vibrating free. So that's all good. And you'll also see I've started to run some wiring. So on the saber tooth here, uh, we've got our black and our red, which is our uh, negative and positive, which is your sort of main battery voltage. So again, that could be 12 or 24 or somewhere in between if you like. Uh, likewise, a Siren 10, those wires go off through the back of this particular board. And what you'll see is on the Siren, and on the Sabertooth, I've got a black and a grey wire, um, which are coming out of the 5 volt and 
in turn those are going into this Arduino Uno and notice that it's plugged into the shield and all the pins on the shield go through to the uh, pins in the actual Arduino underneath so that's how we're getting 5 volts into the Arduino and likewise on the Sparkfun MP3 you'll see the black and the grey are going into ground and 5 volts respectively on there. The RX pin um, on the Sparkfun is our receive pin and that's the green wire and if we follow that across on the Arduino Uno, you'll see that we are going into pin number one. Now, something to point out on here is that the first pin uh, on here, where my fingernail is there, that first one is actually pin zero. So pin one is actually uh, one in from zero. So then we go one and then two and three aren't used and four and five are the orange and yellow wires. Uh, the orange, as you can see, is going off to S1 on the saber tooth. Uh, so that's serial one, that's how the Sabretooth is going to get its commands. And likewise, the yellow wire goes off to S1 on the Siren 10. In order for the Sabretooth 32 and Siren 10 to understand that we're talking to them through a microprocessor, uh, we need to tell them um, that that's how they're going to expect their commands. So what we have to do is change some dip switch settings. So the dip switches, which are these things down here, to use serial with the Padawan sketch, you need to have one and two down and three, four, five, and six in the up position. And that is both the same on the Siren 10, which is this one here. And also a little more difficult to see, but the Sabretooth 32 um, has got one and two down and the rest are all up. So this is the back of this particular board. And again, off camera, I've made up the wiring connectors, but I'm gonna take you through them uh, briefly now. The starting off at the bottom end here, uh, these two long tails, these will be going off to the uh, the main battery or fuse board if you're putting in a fuse board into your droid. Um, so this is where the power enters the actual control system. So let's follow the red wire along first. So the red wire, first thing it does is goes up to our main switch. So the, nothing else will happen when you connect your battery until that switch is thrown. The other side of that red wire comes down and goes into this Wago connector here, which then gives you common whatever's coming out of that switch across all of those five connections there. The thin wire goes off to our uh, back of our voltage uh, readout board. Uh, the next wire goes off to our siren. The next wire goes off to our Sabretooth 32. And finally, the last red wire down here is going through and off to our amplifier. Uh, Following the black wire along now, uh, we'll see that it doesn't need obviously to go into a switch. It's just a common wire. So it goes into this Wago connector here. We have a black wire going to the back of the switch to this third terminal on the switch. Now that all that does is uh, enables the switch to light up. Um, you don't have to have that at all. If you don't want your switch to light up, just simply don't connect a black wire to the little spade tab that comes out of the back of these three spade uh, switches. Uh, another black wire goes into the back of the voltage readout. And then finally, in, in common with the uh, the rest of the red wires, we're going off into the Siren 10, the Sabretooth 32, and of course down here, the amplifier. So once all your power wiring is connected at the back, it's time to give it a test. So what I've got here is just a 12 volt pack made up of three 18650 cells. I'm using an amplified speaker. Uh, this is an acre just plugged straight into the SparkFun MP3 board uh, at the moment because I haven't got the speaker handy for the amplifier there, but we'll obviously test that before this one is all good to go. Um, so without any further ado, let's switch it on. Now, actually, just to point out, um, the transmitter is already turned on. Uh, you should always turn your transmitter on first, uh, either, you know, for any kind of remote control system, always transmit on first and off last. So you can see that that's currently just flashing away, which means it's looking for something to connect to. So we'll power this on. You can see we've got a battery voltage readout. Good lights everywhere. So we've got power there, power to there, power to there. And as you heard, and you may have seen the light flash, that audio confirmation means that now our transmitter has connected. And you can tell that that's happened because the spinning light that's going around, this is the default state to tell you that you're connected, but there is no sort of drive enabled. So if we push the start button, that puts us into drive mode and we get an audio confirmation as you probably just heard. And that takes us out of it. So any of these buttons will now produce a sound as we can hear there. 
So next thing to do is to connect up some test motors and check that everything is working as it should. For the purposes of this demonstration video, I'm going to use my ALT droid, and as you can see, it's just inverted at the moment. But the motors are connected to both sides of the saber tooth, so I've got a red and black going off to both sides. And for the dome motor, I'm going to be using just a little geared motor I had kicking around, and as you can see, red and black are going to the outer two terminals on that. Now, if you find your dome motor is rotating the wrong way, so uh, it, you know the opposite of what you're expecting, simply switch the red and the black outer wires over, and that should correct that issue. If you find your feet motors are going the wrong way, perhaps it's turning when you go forward on the stick, um, then you'll have to swap one side of these um, and then try it again. If it's then going in reverse when you go forwards and forwards when you go reverse, simply switch both sides over again. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how that all works. So as you can see, my transmitter is rotating, which means I've got control over the dome, which is on the right stick, as you can see, we're moving that on the right stick. But if I move the left stick, right now nothing is happening because we are in standby mode, we're in safe mode, if you like. So in order to enable the drives, we're going to push the start button. Now that would give us an audio confirmation, but I've just removed the speaker for now. And that now on the left stick gives me control over the feet. As you can see, I've got forwards and backwards and side to side. Now I've deliberately actually set this one up. So when I push forward on the stick, don't know if that'll come across in the video, but the motors are actually turning the wrong way. They're turning sort of opposite to each other. So it'd be turning on the spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video, switch over the right hand set of wires uh, and hopefully that will correct our problem. So through the magic of television, uh, we've now switched over one pair of those wires, so the right hand set in this case. So now when I push forward on the stick, both motors now travel in the same direction. Likewise, if I go backwards, they both travel in the same direction. I'm obviously just doing this very slow, just trying to give you an idea that you can see the motors turning. Uh, left and right now travel in opposite directions and if that's incorrect for your droid so if it's doing the reverse of what you expect as i mentioned simply now switch over both outer pairs of wires and that will sort your problems out so there we go we're fully tested and configured so that's it the hardware build is now complete everything's connected and you've tested everything successfully through you should now have working feet and dome motor controls and also control over sound on your droid but what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little bit about the software and uh, some of the things it can and can't do. And uh, let's get into that now. So what we're looking at now is the Padawan 360 Body Uno sketch. Uh, a sketch is another way of saying a program or some code. And this particular one, as mentioned, is for the Uno family. There is also a different version for the Mega family. So do make sure that you download and are using the correct one as appropriate to your hardware. These are written by Dan Kraus, and it's uh, based very heavily on the Shadow PlayStation controller system, and it bears a lot of similarities with it. Now, there is one or two things in here that uh, you can change if you wish, if it doesn't sort of suit your, your particular droid build. So, for example, with gearing on your dome motor, um, if it's not turning fast enough or if it's turning too fast, then we can change things in this code that actually control the limits um, as to how fast those can go. And in fact, if we scroll down, one of the first things we see is the three different drive speed settings. Now, as you may know, by clicking down on the thumbstick, you can actually change how fast your maximum speed of your droid will go. And if those values by default are not to your liking, then you can change them in here. Obviously, do make sure you upload the code each time you make any changes. You can also change the speed at which your droid turns on the spot. And another very important thing is you can actually change whether your droid is left hand drive or right hand drive. Now, by left or right hand drive, I'm referring to the sticks on your controller. For most gamers, it feels natural to control the drive with the left hand or the left thumb stick and to rotate the dome with the right thumb stick because that's kind of the default controls for 99% uh, of online games and uh, other video games. Just a little bit further down, you'll see we have a value for dome speed, uh, and this is where you could change the speed of rotation of your dome um, if it doesn't suit your particular gearing and, um, and your motor combination for your droid. Just a little bit further down the sketch, we have something called 
dome dead zone range and also drive dead zone range. Now this controls um, when your sticks are at center, so they're at zero. If you find any tiny little movements in your uh, droid motors or in the dome, then by upping this value, it increases the amount of space in the center of the stick range where it doesn't pick anything up. Now the next thing is actually extremely important and if you take nothing else out of this video then this is it. And this is the dome board rate. Now by default the value of the dome board rate will be set to 2400. With the settings we've set on the dip switches on our Siren 10 this will be incompatible and will not work. So what we actually need to do is to change this value to 9600. Do make sure that you don't change uh, the rest of the value. So especially the semicolon at the end of that line, it has to stay in place. Uh, and obviously do make sure you re-upload the sketch. But if you are finding that the dome will not turn, but everything else works, it's almost certainly that the dome board rate is set incorrectly on your particular build. One of the things that's possible with your remote control is to actually change the volume of your droid on the fly. And what this byte volume equals 20 setting here does is it sets its initial volume. So as you can see in the comment in the line above, zero would be full volume and 255 would be off. So by setting a value of 20, it gives us a little bit of headroom just to increase the volume if we need to uh, remotely from the actual controller. And really, that's about it. There's not a lot else in here that you need to look at or to change. Uh, but just be aware that um, there is some interesting stuff in there. So say, for example, you wanted to change some of the sounds or some of the actions, then uh, have a look through the rest of the code. But do please be very, very careful about making any changes uh, because you could obviously um, upset the rest of the code and find that uh, you get some problems with it. The other thing as well that we try to do is to keep everything as standardized as possible. So uh, if we find bugs or if we make future changes or add improvements and add functionality, it means that um, when Dan releases this code, it should be able to be pushed straight onto your existing hardware without uh, making any further changes to your hardware. So you don't have to change any of the pin assignments or anything like that. If you need a reminder of the components used in this build, then Dan has very helpfully left a little shopping list towards the top of the code that I've just highlighted there. So do have a look through and that will remind you of the components that you require. So that's it. By now you should have a fully functional Padawan 360 system um, controlling your dome motor, your feet motors, and of course your sounds. Now, one of the things Padawan doesn't do out of the box um, is control things like servos. So say, for example, you want to have servos opening uh, the pie panels on your dome or some of the uh, body uh, hinged panels, then the basic Padawan system out of the box does not do that for you, unfortunately. There are ways of doing it, uh, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. This is really just meant as an introduction. I also thought I'd take uh, a quick moment to mention about things like Tier 1 and Tier 2. This is a UK centric thing where we have Tier 1, uh, which is a way of making sure that our droids are safe to use in public events. So Comic Cons uh, and other public gatherings, then your droid should be cleared to Tier 1 and the Padawan system sails through the Tier 1 clearance criteria. If you're planning on using your droid on a TV or a film set, for example, then you need to have your droid cleared to Tier 2 specification. And Tier 2 specification currently requires you to have traditional remote control, so something like a Spectrum or a Futaba remote control system uh, due to the amount of additional uh, radio and electrical noise that you often find on TV and film sets. So anyway, I uh, hopefully uh, that's been enough for you to be getting on with for now. If you want to review any of my videos, then you can reach my uh, YouTube channel at Imperial Light and Magic. Uh, I've made a series of tutorials about uh, Padawan 360. Also, uh, something called Drive Sort, which you are probably going to need uh, if you encounter any issues with your sound files not playing in the correct order. Uh, do look up my video on Drive Sort. There is a playlist with all of these sorts of things on. So anyway, uh, all that remains to to be said is enjoy the rest of Droid Builders UK. Thank you very much for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe and I hope to see you all very soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.